this is the instructions you'll need for square three, uh, the third square. Um, we're going to be working something which is some, sometimes called a dip stitch. Um, it has other names as well. I don't really know. But um, anyway, just follow the instructions and you should be able to get a really funky V shape, which will build up as you progress through the pattern. So the dip stitch is probably the most complex of all the stitches we're looking at. It's not particularly difficult. It's just that it, you have to work on three consecutive rows to get the... Um, the stitches to do their thing. So we work starting on a front row on a on a knit row. Um, just knit a few along. Right, the first instruction you'll get, and this is probably the hardest bit, is to insert your right needle into a stitch which is four rows below the next stitch but one. <laughs> Sounds a bit complicated. So next stitch but one. We ignore this stitch. We move on to the next stitch but one. And we need to we need to count down four stitches. Okay, so one, two, three, four. Okay, so this hole down here, it's a really quite random if you've not done dip stitches before, sticking your needle right into the middle of the fabric. Um, but that's what we're going to do. Okay, so I'll just repeat that again. So we want the next stitch but one. So it's this one, this column here. We want to count down four stitches. So one, two, three, four. Now what you do with the right needle you put it in all the way through to the back okay and we're going to draw up a loop so as if you were knitting put the yarn round it's going to be quite some distance from the needle and you pull that through you might need a couple of goes because sometimes you get get a bit of the um, knitted fabric down there pull it right through give it give it lots of slack okay and then you've kind of got this big loop that comes up and you keep that on the right needle. Now this is the important bit, keep it nice and loose. Don't sort of try and work it like this where it's really tight. So don't be tugging on your right hand. Keep it nice and loose like this, okay? Then we go back, then we knit, just knit ordinarily. Leave that loop there, knit three stitches. Oopsies. So knitting three stitches, this kind of dangles and looks a bit weird, but it will all come good. One, two three okay so you can see this kind of weird diagonal one now the next bit we need to take this right needle and we want to go back into the same hole before so you've got to kind of bring it all the way around back on itself and find that same hole that you went into okay and bring the yarn up again same thing Again, give it a really good tug. Don't try and tension that. Give it a nice tug so it's nice and loose. And you should have these two big loops sort of forming a V, okay? Again, keep it really loose and then carry on your way. So in this case, I'm gonna knit to the end of the row. You might have other instructions to do later in the row, like the odd pearl bump or whatever, but, um, but anyway, this is the bit that's might be new to you. So that's the first step. On the second step we're going to be on the back and the pearl side. So you'll follow the instructions to get along to the, to the bit you did previously on the previous row. So in this case I'm just going to knit a couple, pearl a couple. So you will reach, you'll see these kind of, um, this is your the loop the first loop we come to now sometimes it slips over here so just when you come to you we think it is um the next stitch that you come to just check that is the that is the long loop and it hasn't done that if it has just slip it over because we want this is the one we want to be dealing with the, the long loop the first loop you come to and the instruction is to slip it pearl wise so slip it just means literally putting it from one one needle to another pearl wise means where the needle's going in that direction if it was knit wise you'd be doing that but with the pearl wise so like that just literally slip it from the left needle to the right okay and then carry on this will be followed by three pearls one two three and then again just check this is your long loop um, that we created previously and again you're slipping this pearl wise so needle in from the right to the left and slip it and then you just carry on to the end of the row so that was the second stage of three 
and you've still got these kind of loops flapping around a bit so the next the final stage on this last row we're going to be securing them in um, this point in the pattern is temporarily where your stitch count will have increased so if you lose your way sort of halfway through this third square and you're trying to count be prepared for the fact that you won't have 27 you'll have um, potentially 29 or 31 if you're counting these as stitches okay um, but hopefully they, they should look different okay so on the third row this yeah of this um step here we're going to get again we get to this long loop this time we're going to slip it knitwise to secure it in so instead of slipping pearl wise we're going to come in from the left to the right but just slip it don't work it so it goes over to the right needle the next instruction is to knit one and then we do what's called a PSSO which stands for pass slipped stitch over or slip stitch um, and what you're doing is literally and this feels a bit weird but it will all catch and hold is you insert the left needle into this long loop that you've been fiddling around with drop it off the end of the needle okay and now you'll see it sits nicely behind the one you've just knitted and it's secured there and not going anywhere Okay, and then with the next step is we knit, this will be the central stitch. And then this will we do a sort of mirror reverse of that. So we're going to knit these two together. So you've got the first row, the first knit, uh, first stitch you're looking at is, is the third of those three central stitches. And the next is this long loop. And we knit these two together, like the knit two together we did on the last square. Okay. And you'll see, hopefully, we'll end up with this perfect sort of mirror image V. I'll just get to the end of the row. And then that's what you should be looking at. The reason I was saying to um, to make sure that you don't, uh, when you're first working the first row, not to pull the yarn too tight when you're creating these long notes is if you do, then these will be sort of pulling this fabric up and it'll all be bunched up a bit. So if you can keep them nice and loose like I did, you should have these nice long V's. Um, and then you carry that, it'll always be followed then by a plain pearl row. And then what we do is we're going to be, as we work through this third square, you're going to be stacking up some of these on top of each other. So on the next row, you'll be asked to um, drop down and pick and, and put the needle through the fabric four stitches below. You're going to be going in here somewhere. Okay, but just when you get to it, just count down. Um, and um, you should be able to should be able to find it. It will be one of these. I can't remember which because it depends how many rows you've got in between. But you'll be putting the yarn, the needle through like that, and bringing the yarn up um, like this. Oops. And then that yarn will come. Oh, crikey, it's fine. It's because I'm going from the wrong direction. And then the yarn will be pulling up like that so you'll have these kind of v's stacking up on top of each other and all will be revealed what you're making when you get to the end of the pattern anyway that was square three